action. Hey, what's up everyone? Good morning. It is Sunday morning. It is chest day today and I'm sorry about no video yesterday, Saturday, which was arm day. Um, but I did put up a video telling you a little bit, a little bit of motivation, you know, best I could do at the time. And I also put up a little video on arm wrestling, which I thought was kind of cool. Um, you know, happened to be at Mendelssohn's gym filming and, uh, you know, they were, they were training for the LA Expo, you know, they got a big arm wrestling meet coming up and, you know, he's big time arm wrestler now and, you know, that motherfucker is as strong as shit, you know, so <laughs> I definitely, definitely see some arms getting broken uh, at the LA Expo. Um, I'd love to go watch, but I'm going to be at my booth. So, uh, you know, you guys, if you guys are there, go check it out. And, uh, you know, he's a fucking beast and it's going to be some good shit. And I hope you enjoyed the video. You know, something different. You know, a little bit of education on arm wrestling. Um, and let's start, let's talk about the workout today. So today's chest workout, all right. We're going to start with incline cable flies, all right. This is, this is one of my favorites that I have. I haven't done these in fucking years, like... Probably, I have to say it's been probably about six, seven years since I've done these and it's my back, no excuse, you know, but it's a really good exercise. And, you know, it seems kind of like a pussy exercise, to be honest, you know, you're going to go get a fucking incline bench, you're going to wheel it all over, all the way over to the fucking cables, you know, set it up and, you know, it is what it is. Um, but once it's set up and once you're set, it's a really good exercise. And, you know, when you're doing flies... Um, when you're using free weights, you don't have resistance the whole time. So when you bring those dumbbells to the top, you don't have any resistance. So you have to do all the squeezing yourself. And, you know, it's really hard to get a really good pump when it comes to dumbbell flies. So I definitely prefer cables or pec deck. Now, on the incline bench, what I do is I actually sit higher up on the seat and I hang my chest over the top of the bench. So my head is is hanging off the bench and my chest is sticking straight up to the ceiling. Now what this does is just gives me a much deeper stretch. And uh, you just get an incredible stretch and you get a great pump and you know the resistance is always there on those cables and there's something about this particular exercise that just pumps the shit out of my upper chest. And if you're doing exercises strictly by feel, pump and contraction, this is definitely, I'd have to say, one of the best chest exercises there is for me. So give this shit a try, it's fucking awesome. Again, like I said, it's, you know, it's fucking kind of a pussy thing, you gotta fucking drag the bench over, uh, whatever, but it's worth it. Give it a try. So then we're gonna go straight to hammer incline presses, all right? If you don't have a hammer machine in the gym, then you can use pretty much any machine, but you know, most gyms have the hammer equipment. So, uh, you know, the hammer incline machine particularly is, is, I feel, is a really good machine. I really get a good pump in the upper chest and it's really safe on the joints. I don't have any problems. I can, I can go pretty heavy on it and not have any issues with shoulders and so forth, which is rare for me. You know, I, I really can't go heavy on any exercise when it comes to chest. My shoulders are fucked. So the hammer uh, incline is one that just does not bother my shoulders whatsoever. So for me, it's a great machine. And um, again, I, I skipped how many sets, but the usual five sets pyramiding up on the incline cables. Um, we're going to keep the reps relatively high. So the highest will be 12, you know, as far as high, you know, the, the I'm sorry, the lowest reps will be 12. The highest reps will be 20. Um, then on the hammer presses, you know, we're going to start with a plate, bust out 30 reps. You know, this is just an example. Probably hit two plates for 24. Um, you know, three plates for 12 to 16 and, you know, four plates for 8 to 12, 8 to 10. And uh, the heaviest really neat I ever go is eight, eight reps. I really never go any heavier than eight reps, you know, because, again, I'm not a powerlifter. Don't want to be a powerlifter. Not trying to be a powerlifter. Um, not too concerned with my strength. Uh, my joints are so fucked up that, you know, it, it's, you would think that I was a powerlifter. <laughs> but uh, so anyway, so, okay, after the hammer inclines, we're going to go to the pec deck flat flies, all right? So basically we're doing an isolation exercise, pre-exhausting the muscle, and then going to a compound exercise to thoroughly annihilate it. So that's basically what we're doing. So the third exercise is the flat pec deck, you know, going to rep out higher reps between 12 and 20 reps, five sets, and then we're going to go right to machine flat presses. So same exact thing. Same rep range, five sets, anywhere from eight to 20. I'd say eight to 24, maybe start with 24 instead of 30, all the way down to eight reps. 
And the last exercise, which is, again, one of my favorites, is just the regular cable crossovers. And, um, you know, just standing between the two cables, bent over in a fly position, and repping it out and squeezing the shit out of it. It's one of my favorite chest exercises. Get an incredible pump, incredible squeeze, you know, just burns like a mother. And, you know, a lot of people don't realize is when you're training chest, for instance, when you're doing the cable crossovers, um, depending on where you bring the cables. Now, if you bring them here, it's going to be for the mid chest. You bring them up here, it's going to be for the upper chest. And you bring them down here, it's going to be for the lower chest. Now, it's pretty self-explanatory, but a lot of people aren't aware of that. So it's the same thing when you're pressing. You know, when you're doing presses, if the bar is hitting you in the sternum, that's the part of the chest that's working. You know, if you bring the bar to the neck, that's the part of the chest you're working. You're working the upper chest. As you can see, it's pretty obvious. Upper chest, down here, mid chest, you know. Um, on a machine, you can raise, you can put the seat all the way up, scoot the ass forward, lean back, and you can actually work lower chest. See, you see what I'm saying, the angle? So you can work any part of the chest on any machine. So the point I'm getting at is when we get to the cables, what I do is since we've already blasted the upper, we've already blasted the mid, what I do is I mess around and I'll do different things. I might do a set of upper, and then I'll do a set of lower, and then I'll do a set of mid. And all I'm doing is changing my hand position, you know? And um, for instance, I might do a set of upper and, and I might fill it on my front delts and get a crazy pump in my front delts and it's like, that's not good. I'm not trying to work shoulders. And then I might go to lower and be like, holy shit, you know, and just get a burn like, like I've never felt. So what am I gonna do? Well, I'm gonna stick to the lower flies and I'm not gonna do any more uppers. So this is basically training instinctively, going by the feel, you know? So if you have it planned on a piece of paper or you're following my workout and I say, do, you know, five sets this way, you know, and you try it another way and you get a better feel, then your way is better, you know? And that's, that's instinctive training. So, uh, so that's, that's what I do on the cable crossovers is, is I'll mess around and I'll do, you know, an upper, a mid and a lower, and then whatever one feels the best, I'll go and I'll repeat that, you know, and do another set with the set that felt the best. Um, and then that's pretty much it for chest, you know, five exercises. And, uh, you know, when it comes to bodybuilding, I'm a big believer in doing an isolation exercise, exhausting the muscle, and then going and doing a compound movement. Now, this is probably the least used workout style of anyone in the world because what it does is it weakens that muscle. And so when you get to the compound exercise, you're weak as fuck. And, you know, 90% of the people out there, they go to the gym to show off how strong they are. When they go on the bench press, it's all about how much weight they can do. So if you go do flat flies and you do five sets of flat flies and you pre-exhaust the chest and then you go over to bench press, guess what? Well, now you're going to be weak as fuck. So if you normally get 315 for 12, you know, and that's, that's your goal and that's what you do and that's what you like to show everyone in the gym you can do, and you go over to the bench press and you do 315 for five, now what? You feel like shit? You feel like you failed? You feel like a loser? You feel like a pussy? Well, see, that's the problem is you can't, you can't let the amount of the weight, you know, decipher how good your workout is. You can't worry about the amount of the weight. You know, it's not about the amount of weight. It's about the physical, what you get from the workout, how you look, how your chest is growing, how big is your chest, you know? And it just depends on what your goals are. I mean, would you rather bench press 500 and look like shit? Or would you rather have a fucking amazing chest that everybody envies that's just like unbelievable and bench press 250? You know, I mean, that's, that's, that's up to you what, what you would rather have. I'd rather have the incredible chest. I'm in this, you know, to build a great physique. You know, I can give a fuck about benching 500. You know, now back in my younger days, that was a, that was a lot more important to me. But it still was never more important than how I look. You know, I've always been, I've always been a bodybuilder, a bodybuilder at heart. You know, about the physique, about developing the most incredible physique. You know, and when you're when you're walking around, you know, in, in a t-shirt, you know, you're showing all that hard work. You know, if you can bench 500 pounds and you look like shit, no, no one gives a fuck. You know, no one knows that you bench 500. So, I mean, that's just, that's just my personal opinion. I respect everyone. I respect everyone for what they do, what their goals are. And a lot of people, you know, they're, they're just interested in lifting heavy fucking weight. And that's fucking awesome. So, but I'm just explaining to you that if you're following my workout, 
my workout's geared more towards looking great. So, you know, you know, it, it might be not the workout for you if that's not your goal. So, um, so anyway, I'm about to get my ass on cardio and, oh, let's talk about my weight. So yesterday I hit 296. I have not weighed myself yet today, but as you can imagine, I'm a little pumped up about it and I know I'm just fucking almost at the 300 mark. So I'll be hitting 300 in the next couple days, more than likely. Um, so, you know, when I hit North Hollywood, if that's where I trained today, where am I training today? Chest. Uh, yeah, I'm training North Hollywood Golds. I think I'm training by myself too. Am I training by myself, babe? Yep. I am fuck. Okay, I'm all alone. So yeah, when I get to North Hollywood today, I'm gonna weigh myself and shit, I might be 300 right now as we speak. You know, who knows? So that's pretty awesome. And, um, and that's about it, guys. So I'm gonna get my ass on cardio. I hope you guys have a great fucking day. I hope you have a great workout. Uh, keep moving forward, keep doing what you gotta do, and uh, we're all in this together. Let's do it. Breakfast time. The Body Bully Breakfast. Egg whites and cooked today. So today I'm actually gonna eat like a real human being. And I'm gonna have egg whites and oatmeal. And Cranberry almond with extra fucking protein. Ah, yeah, right. Extra protein, my ass. <laughs> so I'm having three packets, and these these uh, these particular oatmeal's are twice the size of the other ones. So I believe three packets is equivalent to six packets. And uh, let me see. Let me check the carbs real quick. Just out of fucking curiosity. Let me see. One packet has total car holy shit 41 carbs so 41 times three is what 123 carbs okay a little over the carb limit <laughs> so a little over the carb limit you know i told everyone we're doing 60 averaging 50 grams of protein 50 grams of carbs each meal uh, but you know, that's the low end. One minute. So I'm, uh, it's 120 grams of carbs. Man, it's, you know, that's crazy because it just doesn't seem, it doesn't seem like 120 grams of carbs. I'll eat that fucking bowl of oatmeal in two minutes. So, you know, this whole eating thing is, it really is easy, guys. A lot of people really make it out to be so difficult. You know, I talk to people at the expos and they're like, oh, I just can't do it, Rich. I just, I just can't, I can't eat that much food. You know, I just, my stomach and blah, 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 blah. And come on, man. We're talking about eating food. Like, there's so many harder things in life than fucking eating food. Think about the fucking people that are starving, you know, that fucking don't get any food. Come on, man! You can't eat food. You can't eat. You can't eat that many meals a day. You know what I'm saying? Think of it that way. This shit is fucking easy, you know. And remember, this is it's it's, it's for a reason. You know, this is just part of what it takes. You know, everyone wants to be big, but no one wants to fucking eat, right? Is that Ronnie Coleman said something about everyone wants to be big, but no one wants to lift heavy weight? Well, the way I see it is everyone wants to be big, but no one wants to eat the fucking food. <laughs> and eating the food is the easy part. Come on, man. These eggs are so fucking fluffy. Love it. All right. Cheap ass fucking plate. Bam. Bam. You know, you guys got to get in the habit of doing things quick too, you know, like I said, eating quick, cooking quick, you know, just doing shit quick. It makes it so much easier to get all those meals in, get all those workouts in. The oatmeal is a little runny because you know I like to drink that shit. Okay. Get a fork. Spoon, just in case. Bam. Wham. Voila! 25 minutes of cardio done, goddammit! Now, time to eat this breakfast. Plain old egg whites. 
No pepper, no cheese, no salsa, no nothing. Gotta be honest with you, tastes like shit. <laughs> like fucking shit. But, you know what? All the rest of my meals today are gonna be fucking awesome. I'm so hungry right now, I don't even care. Fucking starving. <clears throat> Runny ass oatmeal, big ass bowl. What was it, 121 grams of carbs? Remember guys, eat fast, right? Probably gonna be adding our sixth meal before the LA Expo. So, you know, we can't go too fast though because, you know, we gotta, <laughs> I don't wanna be eating 20 fucking meals, you know, by the end of this program. So, gotta pace it, you know, but, We'll probably have the six meals in the next, next week before, you know, next five or six days. But I will be 310 at the LA Expo. And the craziness is that I started this program at 276. My goal is 306. To get to 306, in four months, right? So, if I hit 310 by the LA Expo, then I've already smashed my fucking goal. But, as as we know, and I've already fucking made it clear, that a lot of that's water weight. So, when I'm 310, solid, with fucking incredible abs, you know, then, then I've accomplished my goal. Actually, I'm sorry, 306. 306. Leaner than I was at 276. Without all the bloat. Then I've accomplished my goal. So, obviously, I'm way, way fucking ahead already. And I hope you guys are too. But shit, it's only been... How long has it been, babe? Two weeks? Yeah. Two weeks! <laughs> two weeks out of 16 weeks. So we still have 14 fucking weeks, man. There's no telling to what could be accomplished. You guys see how easy this shit is? And people at the gym still that talk to me, and it's funny, people still have so much doubt. And it's like, ah, it kills me. So at least after this four months is up, I'm gonna get rid of that doubt. People are gonna be like, holy shit, that doubt is gonna be gone. And And there's no telling where I'm going to end up, you know, because what I'm doing now, I'll be doing two to three times as much. My cycle just kicked in. So, I'm literally taking two compounds, two, you know, two mild ones. All right, guys, I'm almost done with this meal. Then it's time to get ready. Fucking for the gym, looking forward to this shit, and uh, I hope you guys have a great fucking workout. All right, post-workout shake. Same shit, same, <laughs> same everything. Same shit, different day. All right, so we're putting three scoops, right? So that was almost three complete scoops. This will make it three scoops, three scoops. 20, 40, 60 grams of carbs, right? Those buckets are toast, 24 seven egg whites. Perfect, uh, 
about 10 egg whites, and don't forget the goddamn creatine. Okay today, I fucking ran out. <laughs> That's not an everyday thing, by the way. That's just once in a while. You know, I have a craving for cereal, then fuck it. I have a little cereal, right? What's wrong with that? But it's definitely, definitely, I don't need anything else. 60 grams of carbs after the workout is perfect. All right, bam, I got no time to put it in the freezer because we're running late. So I will take it as it is. My killet is pretty much ready to go. I just need to add a little bit more in there because you can never have enough. And of course I can never find a goddamn fucking thing. Okay, I had blue kill it and it suddenly disappeared. How does that work? It's in the, uh, you want me to go get it? Oh, do -do -do. it's over here. How do you like that? So I'm, I'm assuming I have about two scoops, maybe a scoop and a half. So I'm gonna add another two scoops and you know, the way I see it is pretty much with everything in life is I'd rather have too much than not enough. And that pretty much goes for everything. So when in question, always put a little more. That's the way I see it. Let's get ready to go.
Just finished that chest workout. Oh my God, the pump is fucking out of control. Man, between the carbs and the fucking cycle kicking in, oh my God, my chest is gonna fucking explode. <laughs> this shit's fucking on fire. So uh, the cycle should be kicking in for everyone. So you guys should be feeling that shit. And the people that aren't cycling, just keep them carbs up and you're gonna get almost as good of a pump. <laughs> no, not quite, sorry guys. But uh, man, the pumps are out of control. I'm growing like a motherfucker. I don't know if you guys can tell, but. I can say that my arms have never been 24 inches ever in my life. 100% positive my arms are gonna break the 24 inch barrier. 100% positive. In fact, I'm gonna measure them in the next couple days on video because uh, I'm confident that shit's gonna happen. And uh, fuck, that'd be awesome, man. 20, true 24 inch arms, true measurement, no bullshit. So now, I'm gonna rush home and fucking eat. Right, babe? Yep. Rush home and eat. And edit all night. And edit all night. That's what it is. That's our life right now. But you know what? I'm fucking loving it. All right. Our nightly dinner trip. Right, baby? Yep. Fucking go get food in the middle of the fucking night. Mm hmm So we're heading to Chipotle. Mm-hmm. Boring. No. <laughs> Boring shit. But, you know, at least there's no line. At least it's quick. You know, it's pretty decent. I don't want to. I don't even know if I could say that it's fairly healthy anymore. But whatever, it's decent. It'll work. It'll do the job, right, babe? Mhm. Mm so it's crazy because it's like it, the meals that I'm eating that my company is now making are fucking incredible. But I've had this habit of getting food to go for the last like five years. And since we've been together, we've done it every single night. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, it's like our ritual. Like we go get fucking food, bring it home, lay on the bed and fucking grub and fucking watch movies or Criminal Minds or mm -hmm. whatever the fuck we were watching at the time. Yeah, and right? during the summer. And eat fucking Ben and Jerry's. That's yeah. what the fuck we and do. And during the summer we were, had, we were outside <laughs> in the yard. <laughs> Yeah. We had yeah, a picnic. This, this is how lame we are. Because we had... Because we had fucking... Oh, that'll, get, that'll show them, goddammit. Honk at me, motherfucker. I'll honk back. <laughs> <laughs> um, what the fuck? Oh, that, that just shows... That goes to show uh, how lame we are. We're fucking having picnics every night. We have this fucking... No. Big, wonderful, comfortable... We have a yeah. fucking screening TV room to watch fucking... It's a uh, hundred and fucking fifty foot square, whatever the fuck, movie screen. I don't even know how big it is. And we're outside on our little tiny fucking computer. What do you call it? It's a Mac. Mac MacBook. Pro Mac fucking computer watching movies, laying on the hard fucking grass with a blanket. And we lay out there for like four or five hours, right? Sometimes they fall and asleep. fucking fall asleep, <laughs> sleep outside. What the fuck? <laughs> Under the stars. Yeah. But hey. That's it, what we did. We did that shit almost every night. Yeah, it's cozy. It's romantic, baby. You know? Yeah. Camping in the backyard. Neighbors thought we fucking lost our mind. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be out there laughing and shit. Mm hmm. <laughs> Especially when a lot of fun th things happen too. Yeah. She was pro probably videotaping us. You think so? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> So babe, the fucking, the chicken was old as shit, but <laughs> everything, all the meat was old, so I don't know what the fuck to get, so I got you chicken. But you it's know. old? All the meat look old, it's fucking, no one goes there anymore, it's fucking dead. Oh. So it's probably been sitting there all fucking day, you know, honestly, the, the chicken looked fucking old and 
dry and fucking shit. Ugh. So I didn't know what to get. So I got your chicken. Because <laughs> I know, you, you know, none of it looked good, to be honest. So uh, whatever. What did you get? The same as always? Well, I got chicken on my burrito, and then uh -huh. I got... Every I got every kind of meat on the tacos. I got steak, barbacoa, and carnita. Everything, just in case. <laughs> yeah, and it's all, I mean, the, the fucking barbacoa is just greasy as hell, just sitting all day in that grease, you know? Ugh. And the carnitas, carnitas is too salty, and uh, the fucking steak is too spicy, right? Yeah, it's very spicy. I can't eat it. Yeah, we got, we, why spicy. the fuck do we go there? We bitch so much. <laughs> I mean, I love Chipotle. Uh, Don't get me wrong. Playing, fucking but... Uh, we should just go to a different location, you know, like the one by uh, the mall. On yeah, that one's not open this late, though. That means oh. we got to get there earlier. That one closes at 10. Oh, shit. Yeah, this Jeez. one up until 11.30. And then the one on Balboa closes at 10. Most of them close at 10. That's why Jeez. I always think when we're filming, people think we're full of shit. When we're like, yeah, they close at 11.30. They're like, 11.30? No, Chipotle closed at 11.30. <laughs> it's guess. like not even an even time. <laughs> No, motherfucker, our Chipotle closes at 11.30. <laughs> and our habit closes at midnight, which every other habit closes at 10 or 11, you know, because they're they're right across the street from the Northridge College, so they stay open later, you know, than, than all the other ones. So, and what's funny is that in Porter Ranch, if you go up the hill on Rinaldi, the fucking in and out up there closes at 11. 11! There's no In-N-Out in the world that closes at 11. They all close at the same time. In-N-Out has the same fucking hours. Every In-N-Out closes the same. It's 1, 1 a.m. on the weekdays and 1.30 on the weekends. Been that way since I was fucking five years old and I used to eat In-N-Out. And uh, Porter Ranch, you know, they got some kind of strict-ass fucking rules and all businesses have to be closed by 11. All businesses. So there's nothing to eat after 11 o'clock as far as I know in that up, up in that area. So luckily we don't live that far up the hill, right? Yeah, right. Fucking bullshit. Jeez. It is a nice area though, but who gives a fuck, man? In and out close at 11, I don't care how nice it is. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> that's, that's messed up. Actually, it can't be that nice because of fucking Walmart, Walmart there. So how nice could it be, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't see no Walmart on fucking Rodeo Drive. <laughs> Yeah, right? No, I don't think so. <clears throat> oh, man. I gotta register this car, babe. This car, I've had this car for like six weeks and I haven't registered it. It's not even in my name. You know, no insurance, no registration. Yeah, we gotta, oh, we gotta do it uh, this week. It's busy, I don't because, got time uh, for that shit. Because I gotta go and get my, my California driver license. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. The Maserati should be done any day now. Oh, yeah. You have to talk to the mechanic. Yeah, no shit. Because the 21st is coming up in a few days, by the way. I gotta go to the high. I just gotta, I just gotta drive to the higher patrol station. Yeah. And tell them the situation. Yeah. And, you know, the oh, what am I doing? This thing's not right. The worst scenario is I fucking have... I have the truck towed to the higher patrol, have them mark off mm. the fucking shit, and then have it towed back home. Yeah. And then take it to court. I mean, that's, yeah. that's basically, you know, hopefully if I bring a picture and I explain the situation, they'll sign me off without having to have it towed there. But yeah. maybe not, I don't know. Doesn't hurt to try. Yeah. You have to. Or you can just tell your mechanic to get his shit together or we're gonna get a new one. Yeah. He's so slow. He's worse than us. Jesus Christ. Yeah. You know he watches my videos. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh. God damn it, Sarah. No, oh, but... He does a great job, though. But he's... <laughs> he is slow, though. But, you know, he's just like us. Slow. But, you know... Oh, man. Yeah. I'm fucking starving. Ready to grub. Grub down. Yeah, me too. Alright guys. Boy, that Chipotle was fucking good. <laughs> fucking burrito. Three soft tacos. I had all three kinds of meat. Steak. 
uh, fucking, what the fuck's it called? Baby? Barbacoa. Why do they call it barbacoa anyway? Steak, barbacoa, and carnitas. Uh, and then I had a chicken burrito. So, double meat, goddammit. Even though I don't need double meat, it's plenty of protein. I'm just a greedy fucker and I need more. More is better. Right, babe? You got double meat too. Always. The fuck you need double meat for? <laughs> you ain't no damn bodybuilder. Right? You're not even a fucking figure competitor. Not anymore, no. What are you? Just a hot ass fucking chick that looks incredible. Well, thank you, baby. Right? So speaking of that, now that we're on the subject. <laughs> so Sarah's uh, going to be doing an Instagram channel. Not Instagram. A YouTube channel. <laughs> and uh, so she's going to be doing a day in the life. People have been asking her to do this shit. And uh, she wants to do it. And I said, fuck it, do it. That sounds awesome. And, uh, you know, she's basically going to be getting her ass in shape. You guys hear us talking and, you know, the LA Expo's, a, what, a week away. And, you know, she she's, hasn't even tried to get in shape, but she doesn't really need to get in shape because, in my opinion, she looks fucking incredible. But, again, I'm looking at her in a sexual way. So, you know, uh, no one else was looking at her that way, goddammit. <laughs> so... Looking at her and, you know, as far as our industry and so forth, like, you know, there's a certain, you know, people expect us to look a certain way, I think, you know, and to be honest with you guys, like, I, I, I'm sexual, I'm not really sexually attracted to ripped lean girls, you know, I never have been, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm more attracted to the soft, voluptuous, you know, round, full, you know, curvy woman that's soft, you know, I like fucking, you know, I like grabbing an ass and, you know, it's, it's a fucking woman's ass, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, I, I, I want to be the, I want to be the one that feels like steel. I want to be, have the hard physique in the relationship. <laughs> I want to be the man, God damn it. I'm the one with the dick that hangs lower than the balls. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, but, uh, um, but to each his own, but she does want to get in better shape. And, uh, you know, we've talked and, you know, she doesn't, she's competed in figure and she's competed in physique, you know, so she's been fairly muscular um at times and you know she she doesn't want you know to get that muscular you know she wants to just get in nice shape you know lean toned you know maybe a little bit of abs you know but not crazy and i'm down i said fuck that's awesome you know just don't lose that ass you guys you guys know that don't lose that ass and tits and i'm, I'm fine so she's you know she's going to do a little youtube channel of uh you know basically getting in contest shape but not competing and uh, so it should be fun. It should be, it should be, you know, it's, it's fun. We're both having fun doing, filming my shit. So it's gonna be fun filming her shit. And um, so, uh, so that's, that's something new and exciting. I don't know, when are you gonna start it, babe? Very soon. Very soon, yeah. that doesn't fucking tell us anything. Well. <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow, next week, next month, after the expo, before the Arnold? I might even start it before the expo. Before the expo, that's in a week. Yeah. Yeah, I don't see that happening. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I don't see that happening. We're too busy with my shit. Maybe after the expo. Maybe yeah. the first week after the expo. Maybe that Monday, we start filming. Okay, yeah. How does that sound? Yeah, sounds All right? good. Okay, cool. All right, so we got that worked out on video. Yeah. Um, so, today, no, tomorrow. Today I'm going to fucking bed, I'm exhausted. Tomorrow, we're gonna be training shoulders, shoulder day. And um, you know, I gotta mix that shit up and do something different. I'm probably gonna throw calves in there, shoulders and calves possibly. And um, you know, my traps are growing like crazy from those fucking feeder workouts, which is fucking awesome. So uh, I'm probably gonna switch the workout around and maybe start with traps and go the opposite. You know, do it backwards. I've done that millions of times and it's great. Um, if if you're trying to prioritize a muscle or you have a weak muscle that you want to bring up, that's the best way to do it. So let's say that traps is a weak body part, right? So if traps is a weak body part, when you go to train shoulders, you should train traps first. And I'll tell you what happens when I do this is when I start with traps, um, I'll start with traps and then I'll go to rear delts. Now rear delts hits a lot of traps. So when I'm doing my, my rear laterals and so forth, I feel it in my traps. So I'm still working traps. Then when I go to side laterals, since my traps are already pumped and already have blood in them, I still feel that exercise in my traps. I, I kid you not. 
And it, even when I go to presses, I still feel something in my traps. So um, just simply starting with traps, I'm telling you, makes all the difference in the world. And your traps will, will grow like crazy because they're just getting way more. It, it, what, what, what's funny is that you're not doing anything different. You're just doing things in a different order. But just simply changing the order can make all the difference in the world. And you can see why, because you get that pump in the traps and it carries along the rest of the workout. Um, so, you know, that's, that's, that's a good thing to remember if you have a weak body part, you know, you always start off your workout with that weak body part. Um, and we all have weak body parts, you know, we all do. So, you know, again, for instance, if you're training, if you're gonna train legs, hamstring and quads, well, start with the weaker one, you know, whatever's the weaker body part, start with that. Um, you know, and it makes all the difference in the world. That's for damn sure. So, uh, I'm about to do my feeder workouts and uh, my traps are just getting out of control because um, I don't even know if I talked about it on camera, but I was talking about it somewhere that I've noticed my traps have just grown out of fucking control since doing these feeder workouts. Like I was looking at video last night when I was editing and I was like, what the fuck? My traps are getting huge. You know, and traps has never really been one of my best body parts, you know. I think my shoulders have always somewhat overpowered my traps, but I was looking and I was like, holy fuck, what, how, what happened? <laughs> Where'd those traps come from? So I think these feeder workouts um, are actually making my traps grow like crazy. And even though I'm not trying to make them grow, that's what's working. And I'm happy because, you know, my traps have come up, so it's a good thing. And you know, to be honest with you guys, I've never done feeder workouts for shoulders. This is my first time. You know, I've only done feeder workouts for arms. You know, on, you know, I'm saying like on a steadily, like doing it for two months straight. I've never, I've only done that for arms. And for arms, I did that shit for two fucking years. I did feeder workouts for arms two years, every single night before bed. That's how obsessed I was. And you know, I, I have tried every fucking trick in the book. And that's why when I try to explain to you guys, like. Like, listen to me, I'm talking from experience. You know, people don't understand that when I was, when I was 18 years old, I was injecting steroids in my biceps and triceps. Now, that wasn't even fucking, no one even heard of that. No one even thought of that shit back then. This is 20 some years ago. You know, that's how far ahead I was because I was so obsessed with, you know, doing everything I could when it came to bodybuilding that I was doing some crazy shit, for instance, an example is uh, when I was taking growth hormone, one day I was like, you know what, I'm gonna figure out the half-life of growth hormone and I'm gonna figure out the best possible scenario to have the exact amount of growth hormone in my bloodstream 24 hours a day, right? So I sat down and the, the half-life of growth hormone say is, is 42 minutes, right? So I sit down and I say, okay, let's say I take two IUs of growth. So I take two IUs of growth at 6 a.m., right? So it's 42 minutes. So at 6.42, I now have one IU of growth in my system, right? Then at, at 6.42, at 7, uh, you know, 23, whatever the math is, I now have a half IU of growth in my system. And now at 8, you follow what I'm saying? Because at the half-life, it, it, it cuts it in half, the amount that's in the body. So then I would figure out when is the best time for me to take another two IUs of growth. And I sat down with a piece of paper and a calculator and I figured it out to where I could come, I could come the closest possible to having two IUs of growth hormone in my system 24 hours a day. So my body has, 20, has two IUs of growth in my system throughout the entire day and night. It has the exact same amount. And this was just a theory I had back then, this is 20 years ago, of getting the best possible results of taking growth hormone. So I sat down and figured it out and I would actually take a two IU growth shot at a certain time every single day throughout the day so that I had exactly a certain amount of growth in my fucking system throughout the day. So it didn't go up and down, it didn't, and I'm not saying that was the best scenario, I'm just trying to explain to you guys how fucking methodical and the way my mind thinks that I have tried every fucking thing you could ever fucking imagine when it comes to bodybuilding. So when I tell you guys something, you have no idea what I've gone through to come up with that fucking scenario. When I say this is the best, the best possible scenario, you cannot even imagine the shit I've done to come to that scenario. I mean, I can sit here and tell you some shit that you just like, what the fuck? 
First of all, you'll think I'm a fucking genius. Second of all, you'll think I'm fucking lost my fucking mind because I was so obsessed, you know, and you can see the thought that went into this. Now, what I've done is, you know, in my older years in life, I've taken that gift that I have as far as just totally analyzing and coming up with some crazy scenarios, I've taken that and used it towards business. And um, a lot of you might notice that the way I run my business, the way I go about marketing my business is completely different than anyone else. You know, I just, I do things completely out of the ordinary, completely think out of the box. And um, I'm just trying to explain to you guys that when, when I'm explaining things and I'm telling you something, you, you don't have any idea what's got in, what's gone in to that and how much I've put into coming up with that scenario that I'm just fucking giving away for free. I'm just like giving this advice away, you know, and I'm just trying to explain that, that at least when you guys follow this program for four months, at least you guys will realize that I know what the fuck I'm talking about when it comes to putting on mass because the results you guys are going to see my body go through this transformation that you've never seen anyone in the world put on the amount of muscle I'm going to put on in four months. It's never been done and it's never, no one's even came close to achieving what I'm going to achieve. And the reason for me doing this is basically to prove to everyone the knowledge that I have because I'm so tired of trying to help people and people questioning my knowledge. People, you know, uh, contradicting what I say because they read some bullshit on the internet. They don't understand that you, you don't go by what you read, you know. You, my shit, I sit and I fucking try it out. You know, I, I, I analyze it, I try different scenarios. I mean, it, it's a whole fucking process. I don't just read some shit and fucking regurgitate it on the internet. And that's what you guys are doing. So um, after this four month program is over, you guys at least are gonna realize that I know what the fuck I'm talking about. And at least when I'm trying to help you, I'm trying to show you an easier, better, safer way, you'll at least accept my help and appreciate that I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do a good thing. And that's all, I, that's all it is. Anyway guys, I'm gonna go hit my feeder workout. I'm gonna go fucking blast these fucking traps. So right now when you guys turn the computer off, know that Rich Piana's fucking in pain, fucking suffering, <laughs> and fucking being tortured. But when I go to bed tonight, my shit's gonna be growing and uh, I'm gonna be in dreamland and I'm gonna be happy and my shoulders are gonna be on fire and Sarah's gonna be cuddled up next to my shoulders because they're so fucking warm and fucking round and fucking hot and fucking full and fucking anyway guys, I'll talk to you later.